welcome all of you to worship at Gaithersburg Presbyterian Church. We're so pleased to be worshiping God together this day, even though some of you are at home, others of you are with family. Mary Beth and I and Elder Melvin Duncan are here in the sanctuary with the help of James Menzies. Our spirits are gathered together. If you're a guest just experiencing worship at Gaithersburg Presbyterian on YouTube for the first time, we welcome you also and count you as part of our worshiping community. Bringing ourselves into God's presence, let's join together in the call to worship. And if you have the bulletin, I invite you to read along at home. The heavens are telling the glory of God. May our worship reflect God's glory. The firmament proclaims God's handiwork. May our lives also show the divine presence. Let our prayer and praise, our love and service, tell God's story. May we hear the wisdom of God through each voice around us. May we find the grace of God in all that happens. Let us worship. Let us pray. God of grace, God of glory, we come together electronically in hopes that we can come together in your Holy Spirit to set aside our fears so that we may renew our faith, to set aside our worries so that we might worship and honor you, to set aside our loneliness so that we may increase our love of you and neighbor. Be with us as we worship in this new way that words written long ago may be precisely the word we need to hear today. We pray this through Christ, your very best word to us. Amen. So in these early days of a pandemic, when we perhaps have new things to confess, like fear of the future or hoarding food or other supplies, which I will not name, uh, frustration maybe at being confined. The old hymn reminds us, Jesus knows our every weakness, so we can be free to bring everything to God in prayer. If you have printed the bulletin, then I invite you to pray with me out loud before God. If you haven't uh, printed the bulletin, then you can pray silently as uh, together we pray. Most holy God, we admit to you and to each other that we are so dazzled by the false gods of this age that we find it hard to recognize who we are, where we came from, or where we are going. We are caught up in selfishness, seduced by cynicism, and waylaid by consumerism. Forgive us, O God, and set us on the right path again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a moment now to pray silently uh, our own private prayers. Friends, hear the good news now. Fellow travelers on the road to Easter, always remember that there is much more forgiveness in God than we could ever exhaust. Receive from God through the grace of Jesus Christ, the blessing of sins forgiven and a right relationship restored. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Hear the words of scripture, verse from Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. 
God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her break up at will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And then Psalms 19, 1 through 10. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure, altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. This is the witness to God's word. Thanks be to God. Even though we're not together, we're continuing our Lent sermon series on hard and holy conversations. We started with God Speaks, then we heard We Speak. Mary Beth talked to us about the importance of correct speech. Not correct in the sense of grammar and pronunciation, but correct in the sense of being helpful and kind and necessary. Now we turn to perhaps the hardest one of all, we listen. We know we're supposed to listen attentively to other people, but it's very hard. A lot, oh, oh I'm so sorry. I can't believe I did that. I left my That's phone right. up here. No worries, sorry. it happens. Apologies. Just because we're talking, doesn't, not talking, doesn't mean we're actually listening. We could be thinking about what we're gonna say next or preparing our winning argument in our minds. We could be bursting to say, oh, that happened to you? Let me tell you what happened to me. Oh, let me just, let me just tell her that I'll call her right back. Okay, really all right, okay. no okay. worries. Right and uh, we also <clears throat> have to set down our screens. We also have to decide the person in front of us is more interesting than the <laughs> beep and the bing of a new message. So often we set out to listen and we go astray. We interrupt, we mansplain or momsplain, we solve people's problems when all they want is just a vent. We can all tell the difference when people are listening to us and when they're only pretending to listen. I've been reading a great book as I've been thinking about this sermon called You're Not Listening by Kate Murphy. She says in modern life, we're encouraged to listen to our hearts, listen to our guts, listen to our inner voices, listen to our best selves, but rarely are we encouraged to listen to anyone else carefully. 
Listening is hard work, and people eventually give up on us if we're not actually listening. God, though, keeps trying to get our attention. The psalmist who writes Psalm 19 portrays all of nature as God getting us to listen. There are so many ways to think about listening to God. Um, and one of the first ways is, um, is to turn off your phone. It's to turn off your phone, take those AirPods out, and remove your earbuds and go outside. Just go outside. Take a walk if you're physically able to do that. Um, but if not, simply sit on your porch or your deck with a cup of coffee. Watch the sunrise in the morning or the early morning. Watch the sunset at night. I was thinking, realizing this week, how much of our modern uh, industrialized lives are lived in a um, human-made world. We live in apartments or houses made, built by people. We ride in buses or cars made by people. We wear clothes that are made in factories by machines, often out of synthetic materials. Most of our uh, lives are spent living with uh, human-made objects. But when we are outside, we're in God's world. And it's not that God can't speak to us inside buildings, because God certainly can do anything that God wants to. But it seems that we hear God better when we are at the beach or the mountains, uh, when we are walking through the woods or swimming in a lake, when we are gardening or feeding the birds. Go outside. How many birds can you identify? How many trees do you know? Flowers are beginning to bloom like crazy. What does that tell you about God? Another thing we can do when we walk is to pray. Sometimes there are people call them prayer walks. Pray for your neighbors, whether you know them or not. I guarantee you that you, that, that prayer time will become fruitful for God's glory. God will use those prayers in some way. God never wastes a prayer. God will use those prayers in some way, even though you may never know how. If you are walking through the woods, praise God for every shade of green, for bulbs pushing up through the earth, for that amazingly loud mockingbird that sings really early in the morning outside your bedroom window. Be entertained by the heroic acrobatic tricks that squirrels can do. They are amazing. I promise you, I promise you that your worries will melt away when you realize how abundantly God has provided for the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. And so God will take care of us. That's the promise. These are some of the ways that we can listen to God in creation. Listening for God and listening to each other are related to each other. Having a relationship with God means that we listen, and the same is true for each other. The author of that book I mentioned, You're Not Listening, says she asked people all over the country, who listens to you? And most often people said, um, er, uh, they couldn't think of a single person who listens deeply to them. But when we give that gift or receive it, it's magic. Scientists who study the brain say that when we really tune into someone, our brain waves synchronize. That's the science behind that feeling that we've had a really great conversation. We can literally feel it in our spirits and our bodies. There's an old, old story about some nuns who were interviewed by a newspaper reporter. The reporter was eager to hear what their days were like. And so she asked, what do you and your sisters in the community do when you get together for prayer. The, sis the older sister said, oh, not much. We just listen to God. The reporter said, well, what does God do? And she said, oh, not much. God just listens. We listen, God listens, and we stay connected. 
if our brains synchronize when we listen to each other, how much more might that happen when we make time to listen to God? What could be better in the life of faith when we're really listening? These days, there's plenty to hear about the coronavirus, about precautions we should be taking, about what to do, about what to be afraid of, about the state of our panic and whether we're worried enough. But there's also still God, and there's also still each other. Even when we're out of each other's physical presence, there's still plenty of ways to listen, electronically or through text, through a good old-fashioned phone call, or a walk outside at a reasonable distance. In this time for you, may there be unexpected gifts as you listen to God, as you listen to each other, and as you find people listening to you in new and different ways. May we find new ways to connect with each other and with the God who listens to us all and seeks our attention. In Jesus' name, amen. As we come together as the people of God in a season of prayer, I'm going to invite you to do two things. Number one, if you have any prayer requests, please send them into the church office and we'll uh, perhaps include them next week or in our weekly prayers. But then also we will be concluding our prayers today with the Lord's Prayer. And I invite you to pray that out loud. You may be in a household of one and you may not even wanna hear the sound of your own voice but I invite you to pray that out loud. If you live with other people, pray this prayer out loud. And here's the bonus, you can pray in whatever language you wish, because God understands it all. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for the beauty of the earth, for the wonder of your word, and for how they guide us in your will if we will but stop and listen. We thank you that we can learn from each other if we will be quiet and listen to the miracle of another human being. We thank you for the body of Christ and for the ways that we are connected to one another, even when we cannot be physically present to each other. We pray for people all over the world, as well as those here at home, who all are facing the same pandemic, yet without the resources available to some. So we pray for isolated elders. We pray for out of work adults. We pray for hungry children. Often in our worship services, we pray for our military and other first responders. And now we add healthcare workers and caregivers to that list as they too serve on the front lines of working for wholeness in very difficult circumstances. We pray for your church, for this congregation and for others, as we creatively care for our members while we are apart and as we continue to shine light and share hope in our cities. We pray for Grace's grandson and for our brother Fred, for our sister Shirley, for all whose health is already compromised, that they may be surrounded by loving care and the peace and the assurance of your presence. We pray for college students home much earlier than they had planned, for students and families home together for longer periods of time than they are accustomed and for all of us as we adjust to daily changes. In all things, O oh God, and so much more, we offer our prayer, we offer our lives in your best word to us, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whom we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the kingdom, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we go out into God's world, whether we're staying at home or going out a little bit, a few announcements. We invite you to enter into a continued season of giving to the church as you're able. If circumstances allow, please send a gift, your gift to the church. You can do it electronically or by mail. And we invite this whole week to be a season of passing the peace as you share with people close and far away. As we go out, we say the peace of Christ be with you and answer and also with you. Share that all week long as you encounter people in God's name. And as we go out to love and serve our God, may the love of God enfold you. May the wisdom of Christ enlighten you. May the fire of the Holy Spirit kindle you. And God go with you in all things. Amen. <laughs>